In today's video, I'm showing you how I use Notion to implement a version of David Allen's Getting Things Done. I say a version because it has my own sort of twist to it and it doesn't follow each and every step, but I would say it's about 70 to 80% of what David Allen talked about in his book. So what is GTD for those of you who don't know? GTD stands for getting things done. It's a step-by-step -step process in which you collect different things throughout the day so that you don't get distracted by them. And then you come back later and you clarify what those things are. So you decide if it's a task, it's a note, it's just something that you need to shelf, it's an idea for later. Then there's this sort of organizing routine that you have to implement where you come back and you organize these things and you set what your next action is. And finally, you're going to come back and review those action items. In the final step, you really just get things done. Now jumping right into my Notion database, at the forefront we have the collect functionality. And collect and clarify are kind of combined. So if I wanna quickly capture a new task, I just hit new, this big gray new button, and I can give myself a task of walk the dog or whatever it is that I need to remember. Obviously, I'll probably remember that. If it's something that I need to remember, like complete that client deliverable, and I could enter some details there, I could enter it. Now, most Notion systems are super cumbersome and they make you fill out all of these properties right in the beginning. And you just end up spending a ton of time filling out properties in Notion. But with this system, you don't need to do that. You can leave them all blank and you can close this side panel and we'll come back to that later. That's part of the processing and organizing within GTD. As you can see, this quick capture also works for taking quick notes. So if I wanna add a note, I just hit new and I can take a note on GTD and I could just list out some bullet points here. Again, you don't need to add any properties here. We're looking to be efficient with your time so you can come back to this later. This also works for adding a new bookmark. So I can just hit new. And let's say I come across an interesting article or somebody shares a URL with me and I wanna put it into Notion. I can just give it a title here and then I could enter the URL and move on with my day. So let's just say it's youtube.com, enter and close that. You can actually hook this up with some other useful tools like Save to Notion, which is a Chrome extension. I've also heard some people have set up Apple shortcuts with this so that they can quickly add these different items that they need to add. Or you could simply create a Notion widget if you wanted to with this system. So that's sort of the collect and clarify step within GTD. But now we're gonna talk about processing and organizing these different tasks that have come into our system. It's also important to note that I have a habits feature here in my Productive Brain 2.0, which rolls up my habits for February 9th, which is today's date. Tomorrow, it's gonna to swap these out for February 10th's habits. So this is very useful for checking things off throughout the day as I get them done. Let's imagine I needed to process and plan now. So that is actually a habit on my habits list. And this is kind of part of keeping this system running like a well-oiled machine. So I would check this off once I'm done with what I'm about to show you next. So down here, I have my routine views and first I process. So I'm gonna go to the process page. Now I've been sick for a little while, so I'm just getting back to my process page after a week of being completely MIA but I'm gonna show you how I get to inbox zero on all of the things that I've collected throughout this time. So the first thing I notice is that I had a new goal that I added here, cut commitments that don't move freight. So this is something that I've been trying to do lately, just cut those things out of my life that aren't really getting me closer to where I need to be. So this is something that I need to categorize because it's in here. All of my other goals are stored in my goals database and they're over here on my calibrate page. But this goal needs some more information before it can move over there. So what I do with a goal like this is I open it up. As you can see here, I have one action here and I'm going to continue adding actions to this. But since this goal isn't categorized, I'm gonna click into some empty space and I'm gonna backspace and hit add new goal. Now this is going to pull up my goal checklist. So add a goal title, the specific, meaningful, measurable, and realistic, done. Choose one goal area that this goal fits into most accurately. So this is the next step, right? I need to choose an area. So I'm gonna click on my areas, and I would say that this goal is related to self-improvement, so I'm gonna hit self-improvement. Now it wants me to select a goal type. 
So for goal type, if I select a clear end result, then I need to fill out time frame here. So as you can see, this goal is still in here. But if I select ongoing goal, watch as it disappears. Ongoing goal, boom. That's because it doesn't need a time frame. So now it's pretty much processed. But there's just a few extra steps that I want to complete, like adding a cover photo and adding an icon here. So let's quickly do that. I'm going to check these off. Let's actually just delete that. And I'm going to add in an icon. And we're going to add a cover. And then I'll just close this. And as you can see here, there's no goal left. So I would move on to my next section of processing, which is process notes. I have some accidental notes that I've taken, so I'm just going to delete those. And this note here, take a note on GTD, this was the example I showed you guys in the beginning. So now that I'm coming back to this, I could actually add to this if I wanted to. I could even use Ask AI and Notion to go ahead and make something a little bit more thought out. Let's say make longer. And it's going to turn this into some nice text and I could actually replace that if I wanted to. So now this note might be completed or I might consider it completed. So I'm just going to select a topic for it. So let's just do self improvement. And as you can see, it has now disappeared. It doesn't need a source, but source is also an option in here if I wanted to add one. Next, this is where the system gets super powerful. We can process our tasks here. So anything that needs info is going to show up in here. Complete client deliverable. That's that example one I gave you guys. So let's just give it a due date of tomorrow and action date of tomorrow. And let's set a priority level of priority two. I'm just going to make my related goal complete client deliverables. That's appropriate. So I need to add a due date for this. I can go ahead and set this for March 12th. And the related goal, let's say spirituality, I'm going to hit new. And that goal is going to be up here because I haven't processed it yet. But now I'm just going to do the same for this church one here as well. I'm actually going to be gone for this networking event. So I'm just going to mark it as delegated. This is one of my completed tasks here, one of my options for a completed task. And this is something that GTD stresses as well, right? So if you're not going to complete something, you're going to delegate it. So I've added delegate here because if I have something I want to delegate to a team member, I can do that and then hit delegate and it disappears from my to do list. And I know I've already delegated that, so we're good to go. And now we don't have anything left in needs info. I'm going to go to past due here and I'm going to see everything that is past due. A few of these I'm going to move to the back burner. So I'm just going to hit move to back burner and that'll make it disappear from my list, even if it is past due and I can resurface that later and check it out. I'll show you what that looks like in the planning mode. This one here, I just need to change the due date to tomorrow, clean bedroom, due date to tomorrow, restructure cards, tomorrow, film notion AI. This is something that I actually completed, so I'm just going to hit complete. Now let's go into my reschedule action. Now again, I see a few items that have already been completed, but they don't have related goals. So I'm going to add some related goals to them. I don't need to necessarily add a due date or priority levels, but I do like to keep things organized. So let's go ahead and fill out these goals and let's complete these because they are completed. I just forgot to check them off. And that's the beauty of this. Even if you did complete something and it was on your list, but you forgot to check it off, you'll notice because it'll be in your process tasks after a while because it's going to say you need to reschedule this action. And if you completed it, you can just mark it as complete. Now, clean bedroom needs to have a rescheduled action date. So let's just reschedule that for tomorrow. And as you can see, my tasks have been completely processed. It's beautiful. It's perfect. It works amazing. Now we have this unprocessed bookmark down here. And sometimes I'll accidentally add something or I'll add something as an example like this. Typically for this, I would just go ahead and delete it. But if I didn't delete it, what it was wanting was a topic and a URL. So if it doesn't have a URL or a topic or it doesn't have a title, for instance, it's going to stay in here until I add those items. My next course of action would be going over to my plan page. And here on my plan page, I can see all the actions that are not completed yet that are on my list that are up next in a sense, if you're referring to the GTD terminology. 
but I found it extremely helpful to relate these tasks to a time frame rather than just giving them an up next or a main focus. In the Productive Brain 1.0 and Productive Brain 1.1, I just had them kind of in these weird priority levels, but in this version of the Productive Brain, we relate them to a day so that they actually get done. And if they don't have a day that they're related to, then they end up in back burner right down here. Or if they're stuck, of course, they'd end up in stuck. But here I can very easily reschedule things and drag things around. So finish 2022 taxes. This is something that I know is going to take a ton of time. And I know I'm doing pretty good on the deadline for this. So actually, let's change the due date to like April 1st. So I'm still a little bit ahead of things. But I can see here that I have 51 days remaining. And I even have more than that. But 51 that gives me a bit of urgency. So let's go ahead and just drag this to March 2nd because I am going to be out of town for a while here. I'm going to be in Florida. So I need to make sure that tomorrow, Friday, is a super productive day. Uh, I do know that I completed setting up cameras and right now I'm filming my productive brain video. I think it would be good to restructure cards tomorrow. Complete client deliverable was just an example, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that now. Cut all expenses that aren't absolutely moving the ship. That would be a good pry two for tomorrow. Clean bedroom, we'll go pry three. And I see January financials here. This is something that I actually do want to prioritize because if I don't, then I'm not going to get it done in February. It'll be March by the time I get it done. So actually, I'm going to make this a pry one and we'll make this a pry two. We'll make cut expenses, pry three. And now that my planning is complete, it's time to actually reflect on what's next and to actually get some things done. So here on my homepage, if I toggle down the to-do list, you'll see that it automatically populates what I have to do for the day. And this works really well for the getting things done system because if I've processed, planned, and captured all of the tasks and notes that I need, then they're going to show up in the right places in the productive brain. And here, if I hit complete, it's going to completely disappear from my to-do list. I also have my focus page, which allows me to see a bit more details on the tasks that I have going on, like the goal, so that I'm a little bit more motivated towards it if I see the greater goal or the bigger picture ahead. And I also have my focus statement. So right now, my focus statement says, before I leave for Florida, I will get finances in order and film three videos. So that's my main priority. That's the thing I want to focus on. That's the thing I'm hellbent on getting done. So with that being said, I made that my focus statement and I'm working along with my action plan right now as we speak. This has been how I use GTD and Notion. If you want to get this template, this is actually my flagship Productive Brain 2.0 template. And it's a second brain template in Notion. It has the GTD method in it. It has elements of Para. It has elements of Zettelkasten. It brings all of these productivity frameworks together in a no-nonsense template that's going to help you get things done more effectively. I will warn you that this template is not cheap, but I do offer discounts to students and people who have served in the military. So if you have one of those things, you can always email me. There's an FAQ on the landing page. So if you want to, you can get a discount on it. But if you want to get this template, you can check out the link in the description or the top pinned comment. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.